Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Today's lesson is how to break and move bedrock with simple hand tools. We've kind of lost this art because we have something called heavy equipment nowadays. Unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, access, regulations, just other physical constraints, whatever, you may not be able to use heavy equipment, or as they like to call it, motorized earth-moving equipment. Uh, it may also be very expensive. So I'm going to show you how you can relatively easily move a fair amount of rock by hand in a day. Now, we have basic hand tools here. We got some shovels, rake, a mattock. This is called a mattock. And it's different from a pick. A pick has two long pointy things on it. This allows you to, to get a, a nice point into various things, but also has like a hoe where you can move dirt and things like that. It's more versatile than a pick. I make fiberglass handles where possible so that they don't break. Always get yourself a good working area. Now in this case, I'd like to have a little more room here and I want to bring this up a little bit. So I want to take this right here out and just kind of spread it this way. And I'm going to use this to demonstrate the various techniques of breaking rock. So using a shovel by itself is not going to do you much good. The pick end will do a lot better. It will break it up. Now this takes a fair amount of that horrible thing, that terrible four-letter word called work. Now, I'm not afraid of work, but I'm not a huge fan either. So this is my go-to tool for breaking rock. This is the Hilti now, TE-1000 AVR stands for Active Vibration Reduction, and it works. Now, this is a pretty powerful hammer, 1600 bucks, brand new. But you can rent these rascals. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses if you're picking, hammering, or anything with rock. Now, just watch how this thing just sinks See how you through that rock? And I think, okay, it's broken up. Let's dig it. Well, gee, doesn't want to dig very much. That's because your shovel's trying to go like that. And it doesn't work very well. We have this pre-existing surface here. So what you do you take the pick and you rake it. What you're doing is you're moving all the big rocks up above this plane down here. Now you can come in, pick them up pretty easily. Again, I'm trying to fill this in just a little bit so I'm just spreading it right here whenever you're moving rock first question is where are you moving it to and why don't throw it away if you can use it as a valuable building material so 
There we've moved this rock. And that's basically the surface I want to create right there and just fill it in. So move the rocks off here so that I now have a smooth surface. Any rock that falls on top of that is going to be on top of it so I can go underneath it. Now I'll take another slice. and break it again. So this rock would not allow you to dig, but now you can get right underneath it. Now you'll notice I'm not doing this. That's as hard as I can push. Push right here, lower my weight, use the leverage of my leg, and it just drives it right in. It saves a lot of energy. Do not use your arms, your shoulders, and your back to push a shovel into the dirt. Use gravity and leverage. It's a lot less effort, but a lot less strain on yourself. This is not a marathon, I mean a, a sprint. It's a marathon. You need to save as much energy as possible or you're gonna wear yourself out. And not be able to get the job done. That's getting about where I want it. Knock down any loose stuff. Now you notice I can just scrape it with the shovel. These are pretty smooth surface. Now, take the rake, smooth it off a little bit more. Here we have some vein material. We have this altered rock here from previous experience. I know that this material here is pretty low grade, as is all this other stuff. So I'm gonna throw it away and try and get just some of that. This is gonna to tend to be harder than this is. This is much more fractured. Now this is very important when it comes to rock. Rock is very strong under compression. It's hard to break by doing this. But 
it's not nearly so strong under tension. So what you want to do, create some tension in the rock and it will just crack. If I were to take and put the energy this way, all that rock is supporting it, it's going to be very hard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the chisel bit here, drive it down, and this will just pop away. I'm also going to be feeling for any cracks or weaknesses and moving that chisel bit to take advantage of those as I go. So let me break this out right here. Now we're going to move this out of here, and right over there I'm kind of building up a trail. So I'm going to take this waste and use it as a building material. I've got to move it anyway. I might as well make my life easier later by having a nice path to the upper level. Standard wheelbarrow. Nothing fancy. It's a, it's a decent one, not a little teeny garden one. One thing that's important about wheelbarrows, never use a pneumatic tire. They work fine in a yard. Out here you're going to get cactus needles, something else in them, and they will go flat on you. Guaranteed. So spend the 30, 40 bucks to get a run flat. This is a cobalt from uh, Lowe's, it costs about, I think, 96 bucks, and it's got a lifetime warranty and a run flat tire with it. This is a good bargain. Now, using our previous techniques, go ahead and get these rocks down here a little bit. Now you'll notice some of these were pretty big rocks. They're actually easier to handle. Them. Do not take a big rock and drop it in there. It will bend it. These big rocks like this are a little more than I want for what I'm doing. So I'm going to haul them off and dump them over the side be right back. Now you notice how quick that was. That's about 150 pounds of rock. Now, start loading again. You'll see how easily the shovel just glides under those rocks. That's because it's running right on the top of the existing surface. And the rocks, therefore, don't offer any resistance. Now you'll notice that this load is focused towards the front of the wheelbarrow. The reason is I'm lazy and I'm old and you can hear me hunting and puffing. I want that wheel to work. I don't want to do it. I want that to carry the load. By putting your load forward, the wheel can take three quarters or more of the actual weight of the load. All you're doing is providing the propulsion and enough to get the back end of the wheelbarrow off the ground. 
I'm going to take it over there and dump it. Then I'll come back, break some more, get another load, and I'll show you about how we dump it and why you have to think about that too. You take it up here, get it to where the lip of the wheelbarrow will come down right about on the edge. And what happens is the larger rocks will tend to go down there, and the smaller rock up here so you can just smooth that off and there's a nice smooth road that's the way to make life easy because you don't want to work any harder than you have to now I've moved a little bit more material and now I have a wheelbarrow that's full of relatively fine material. I mean, this is coarse compared to normal gravel. But what I want to do is I want to start about here and start coming up so that by the time I get to where the tripod is, I've got about an 18 inch to two foot lift that I'm taking up the hill about another 50 feet. I want to get a thick lift so the big rocks like that can be in the bottom and I can build the road on top of that with relatively finer material. Instead of dumping the whole wheelbarrow in one spot and then spreading it around somehow, what I'll do is so put some there, some there, and the rest here. Now you've already done two-thirds of the distribution. You can kind of rake it with just the tip of the shovel. And there you are. Starting the new lift. Now the next wheelbarrow full of fairly fine material can go right here and you'll be daylighting right about here. Dump your wheelbarrow so the little bit goes on top and the big rocks go over the edge. That way you'll have a little bit of fines to surface your road with while the big stuff is out of your way. Here's the working face all cleaned up and ready to go. The time is just before 2 in the afternoon, and I've placed markers where the current face is. Over here is a trail I'm building. I put a marker here, too. Okay, it's been about an hour and 45 minutes. And uh, I've made about two feet of advance on this face, which should be about two tons. So I'm getting a little more than a ton an hour, which isn't too bad for uh, a 60-year-old geezer, 60 years today. And uh, that's how it works. I just keep going at this rate. We could uh, advance, what is that, 8 to 10 feet in a day, one person. Have a couple people, it goes faster. I'm kind of old, a little, little short of breath, so I got to take my time. I got to rest on uh, more than one occasion. And uh, what I'm going to do now is do a little bit of review, and then I'm going to try and do a complete cycle here on the face, I'm going to speed it up so that you can see it. First thing you need to do, you have this vertical face. We've established a vertical face, a nice smooth floor. So what we want to do is cut a chunk off the face. I've been taking about a six inch slice. Seems to work pretty well. When you do, the toe which is the bottom of the face here, is going to tend to rise on you because by the time you get down there with a the hammer, there's a big pile of rock and you can't really get it down too great. 
So once you peeled everything off, then you rake it with the mattock, haul the big stuff and throw it over the edge. Then I dig the mixed stuff and the fine stuff and dump it either right on the top edge so that the bit, if you got a mixed wheelbarrow, you dump it about, so the edge of the wheelbarrow is about that far back from the actual edge. That way anything bigger than this rolls down the slope. And do it quick, foomph. And your big rocks go to the bottom, your fine stuff stays on the top, leaves a little pile about this high, you just flatten it out and keep going. Do it that way, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time fixing anything or smoothing it out. It goes pretty quick. Uh, once you get dug down to grade or close to it, you're going to notice the toe is going to be up a little bit. Do what it takes to knock it down. And dig that out and then keep going. I'm going to take a single advance now using the uh, uh, time lapse, so to speak. Uh, another couple things. If it's too hard, the hilt he's not doing, or whatever hammer you've got, isn't cutting it, go to a thinner slice. Come at a different angle. Look for a crack. Make sure you've got a good place to split it to. Just have at it different ways, and generally you'll find a weakness. Take the easy stuff first, and then go after the hard stuff. As you've, you've dug it out, you've weakened the tougher material because it doesn't have anything holding it up. So attack the weak stuff first if you got a hard spot, go around it, then attack it. Don't leave hard spots behind you if you have to, unless you, unless you absolutely have to because they're going to be a pain in the butt. Spend the time to tear them out. You may have to work around them first and then tear them out, but whatever you can do. They've also got like the little micro blaster and stuff like that. In a case like that, that might be your way to go. You can rent these things. Got a, a 3600 watt champion generator in the back of the truck. Sportsman's Warehouse, 350 bucks. We use them in my other business and they'll typically run 5,000 hours before they finally crap out. So it's pretty cheap. You notice all this stuff can easily go up a, a hiking trail. You know, the hardest thing would be the generator and two people could carry it carry it pretty easily. It has a wheel kit on it. You can just take it up. But anyhow, if you had a relatively inaccessible spot, this is the way you can get the materials there and actually do some mining. Now, let's have at it. Start on one side. And, I don't know, that was five or ten minutes. Broke about a half a ton of rock.
This is called the old geezer pose. If you're a smart old geezer, what you'll do is you'll start looking carefully at the rocks, examining them, pull out your loop if you can. Spout off some geology lingo so you can convince them that you're doing something besides catching your breath. Gotta stay one step ahead of the young whippersnappers. Uh. material right in here maybe or sure sounds like it it's got to be quartz even though it's kind of ugly wall rock wall rock quartz And let's see. That slice took almost 30 minutes. I'm now running a little behind. That was a half a ton. So we're looking real close to one ton an hour, one geezer. We'll call that a geezer hour. Here's where the marks were when I started. So that's how you break rock and move it. Do it as efficiently as possible. And you can move a fair amount in a day, even just one old geezer and a wheelbarrow. Happy prospecting and keep it safe. <laughs>